So it was, it was a little surprising to me when several years ago I went to a reading in um, Santa Barbara and I was reading with a man named Barry Spax and Barry read a poem in which he placed Rumi in a room full of cheerleaders. <laughs> it was fantastic. I was like, wow! I mean, if that was possible, right? If Rumi could be in the room full of cheerleaders, he could be anywhere. And suddenly he was. Like, really. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was channeling Rumi, because I wasn't. It was definitely a literary thing, and I'd memorized quite a few uh, Rumi poems, because I, did, I had really appreciated him for a long time already. But suddenly, like, I would go to my son's kindergarten class, and there was Rumi. And I would go to Walmart, and there was Rumi. And I'd go to the beach, and there was Rumi. And, and he was showing up in all these places, and everywhere he'd show up, he'd kind of point out where I was being a dodo. And so, uh, so that was kind of how these poems started, and here's, here's how they go. Rumi goes to the beach. I didn't really want to walk into the ocean, though the breeze was warm, though the water was clear. Being dry felt, well, so dry. You can't be baptized if you don't get in the water, said Rumi, and he rushed past me from behind, leaping and launching himself into the waves, and then he turned toward the shore to splash me. But the water is so wet, I said with a wince, and he splashed me again, and he splashed me again, and I did not, did not like it. I scowled, and I used my foot to slash Rumi back, but he already was wholly glittering wet. He just laughed and motioned for me to come deeper in. I didn't want to go. So I can't quite explain why I did, except that there was somehow a larger part of me already at play in the waves of him, and it pulled in the smaller, resistant part until all of my limbs were diamonding in the sun. The ocean smoothed me with lavish salts and brought jellyfish to bloom at my side. Rumi, he had long since melted into the waves. His breath was the ocean's breath. The white gulls creached and keeled overhead, and for a moment I felt such compassion for that fussy one who was tying up her wind-licked hair, hoping she could keep at least that part dry. <laughs> Ruby goes to kindergarten. And when Miss Mackey says, Children, this is so sad. Someone left the lid off the black marker. <laughs> and we all know how valuable they are. And Rumi raises his hand and says, September is a time for death. Do you think death is a bad thing? And Miss Lackey tips her head in an inquisitive way as she does and then kneels down close to him. Did you do it? She says to Rumi, did you leave the lid off the black pen? He smiles. Your work is not to point out who's to blame, rather to find all the boxes you put around the way you think things should be. <laughs> Miss Lackey gives him a lopsided smile. Rumi, do you mean me? She sends the rest of the kids off to recess. Meanwhile, Rumi sits in his chair. You're a funny one, Rumi. Miss Lackey says, I'm a fool, he says, jumps on the table and starts to spin. Five more minutes, says Miss Lackey, and Ruby grins. <laughs> Last poem in the book. Dear Rumi, sometimes I think if the night were clear enough and the wind were still, I could see through all these walls I've built to protect myself from what? 
and I'd know how to bring them down. But then I could be open. But tonight the sky could not be more clear and there's no hint of wind and I still feel in my heart all the places clenched and tight. Not open, dear, but opening, I imagine, reminding me that open is a verb, not some destination where I might arrive. Some magical place with a beach, an umbrella, some anywhere I've dreamt up that isn't wherever I am. The prediction tomorrow is snow, roomy, and I will perhaps be so enthralled or busy with it that I will be drawn fully out of my thoughts of open and opening and how, but there I go again, planting myself into the future as if it will be easier to be present then than it is now. Right now, there's a knocking in the kitchen. I don't know what it is, a heater, the fridge, and my own heart knocks against my chest like a neighbor who comes to borrow a cup of sugar in the middle of the night. I don't know why, Rumi, I am writing to you, except that it feels as if something has started in my soul, something I don't understand, something more about forgetting than remembering. And as you once said to your own teacher, Shams, you make my raggedness silky. I turn to the yes I feel when I read your words. And I know that I know nothing. When I read you, it feels as if the angels that I don't quite believe in have come. Is that them doing all that knocking? And those walls I mentioned? Well, I can almost laugh at them when the doors I didn't even know were there begin by themselves to open. <laughs>